Hello and welcome to module 9 of chemical kinetics and transition state theory. So, this is the third installment of kinetic theory of collisions. Uh, in the last two installments, we had looked at the basic idea which once again is uh, assuming our reactants looks like hard spheres and they are colliding with each other and uh, we calculate the rate of the reaction is nothing but the rate of these collisions. Okay. Uh, so, last module we uh, tried to figure out this uh, thermal speed u as essentially the uh, relative speed u and finding a thermal average and we did that by doing a center of mass transformation and all. Today, uh, once we have a rate constant, we are going to analyze it a little bit. We are going to calculate the rate constant out of the rate. Uh, we are going to look at a special case when A is equal to B, when both uh, reactants are identical and, and we will end with a uh, comparison with the famous Arrhenius equation. So, again the resources are the chapter 4 of the Laidler's book or you can look at uh, this link by chemlibardex.org. Uh, again a quick recap, we uh, uh, note that this uh, kinetic theory of collisions is valid only and only for bimolecular reactions. Uh, we identified the thermal speed as this u 8 kt over pi mu uh, and this mu entered as a reduced mass m a m b over m a plus m b and we had gotten this final rate in the last module pi r a plus r b square root 8 kt over pi mu into n a into n b. So, first let us uh, simplify and calculate the rate constant. Uh, so, what is the difference between rate and rate constant? So, uh, again let us write the reaction clearly A plus B going to products and remember we are assuming uh, this is elementary. This is one step nothing more is happening A is coming and B is coming and they are colliding and giving these products. So, my rate I can write essentially as K uh, N A and B. Uh, you might be wondering why I am not using concentration of A into it is really the same thing. It is a matter of change of units. Uh, remember what is Na? Na uh, is nothing but the particle density. Which is the number of A molecules or atoms divided by the volume. Let me write volume clearly and similarly B is defined as the number uh, density of B. Well, that is effectively the same thing as concentration. So, as long as we are talking in the language of Na and B, rate will become equal to K into Na into Nb. So, you can go back to the first module we discussed and go back to the definition of rate which is uh, D of uh, extent of reaction over dt and you can identify that to be the same as this. It is uh, it's really the same thing, it is just a transformation. So, uh, then you notice that the rate I have calculated is this. So, if I compare these two, uh, I can easily get okay. uh, So, I have got this rate constant uh, and uh, of course, the rate uh, is k n a n b. Uh, I want to spend just a few minutes and just think of dimensions or units. Just make sure that our final result uh, makes sense. There is no catastrophe that has happened in my whole proof. Everything is still uh, logical, everything is still sensible. Uh, that is always a good check. Anytime you have derived something, make sure that the end result is something that you can verify. I mean something that makes sense. And one of the most important thing that we often do is uh, dimensional analysis. Uh, so, what is the first of all the unit of rate? Uh, so, again my reaction is A plus B going to some products and rate is minus dNA by dt. 
again uh, you could have written concentration of A by dt that does not matter, it uh, effectively is the same thing, it is just a transformation. If you, you write concentration of uh, A then in our uh, definitions here and here as well uh, this, con this will be transformed to concentration. Okay. Uh, so, the unit of this, what is the unit of Na then? Uh, the units, the units is no, nothing but a number of particles divided by volume. So, the unit of rate is nothing but uh, dNa over dt. So, number of particles divided by volume into time, time comes from dt. So, Na is number of particles by volume and T is time. Okay. Uh, so far so good. So, uh, K is uh, rate divided by uh, Na and B. So, this will be number of particles divided by volume into time divided by number of particles square divided by volume square. So, if you simplify this, this will be equal to volume divided by number of particles into time. Okay. Uh, so, let us see the rate constant that I have got here, uh, how does that look like? So, our k has the dimensions of pi does not have any dimension, so I am looking at this equation now. R a plus R b square that has dimensions of length square and this thing is nothing but speed and speed is length divided by time. So, I have length q which is nothing but volume by time. Okay, so, uh, the point is that this rate constant should be understood as, uh, as eventually divided by the number of particles. Okay. So, we compare this with this. Uh, the final thing I, uh, the next thing I want to compare uh, is a somewhat special case if uh, A is equal to B. So, I have 2 A going to some products. Okay. And so, A is reacting with itself. Uh, uh, you might be a bit surprised perhaps, but actually we have seen such an example when we were discussing the isomerization of, uh, uh, of uh, cyclohexane, yeah. sorry isomerization of cyclopropane to propene, then we discussed this uh, 2A. Uh, the question is can I write K as the same pi of R A plus R A square into root 8 k t over pi mu. Uh, actually the answer is no, there is a little bit of a trick here. So, let us go back to the basics. What are we calculating? We are calculating the average number of collisions happening per unit time per unit volume. That is our definition of rate. number of collisions per unit time per unit volume. So, imagine you have this big box, you have A here, let us say you have a lot of A's and you have a lot of B's. So, I am again uh, going over back to the case when A and B are distinct. So, what I am really doing is I look at 
one particular A, I sit on A1, okay, and I wait for time dt, delta t, whatever, and I find the number of collisions A1 had, okay. So, this essentially is an average quantity. Remember, all statistical mechanics is average. So, this we are calculating as uh, collisions of A1 in time delta t, well plus collisions of A2 in time delta t plus uh, dot 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 till uh, collisions of all A n divided by uh, total number of A. Yeah. So, that is why we used N A as the probability density. So, yeah this is how we, again I am going back to the very basics. Now, let us do the same thing if A is equal to B, you will notice something very interesting will happen now. I had A1, A2, A3 and B is the same. I have A4, A5, A6. Yeah, And I am looking at the collisions between A and A. So, when I do this averaging, number of collisions of A1 in time dt plus number of collisions of A2 in time delta t plus so on divided by total number of A. What you note is that I am counting the collisions twice because A1 might have collided with A2. That collision will appear here and the same collision will appear here. So, every collision I will quant, quant, count twice if I am con considering collisions between same entities. Yeah, so this rate will be half of total number of collisions. per unit time per unit volume okay because why did this half appear each collision has been counted twice so spend some time on it think about it a little bit and uh, you will immediately see that uh, this count, each collision is counted twice. Okay. Uh, so, in effect my rate uh, will be half of pi uh, 2 r a square, it was r a plus r b and r b equal to r a into root 8 k t over pi mu and mu also becomes simplified, mu is m a into m b, uh, so b is again a divided by m a plus m b, but uh, b is nothing but a. So, this becomes m a over 2. For a with a. So, always remember this factor of half when you are looking at uh, bimolecular reaction where A is colliding with itself. Okay. So, we have got a rate constant uh, k is equal to this pi r a plus r b square uh, 8 k t over pi mu, uh, maybe a factor of uh, half if you are more particular about it uh, A being equal to B or not. Okay. But let us take a broader picture. 
Arrhenius and Van Toff had earlier written a uh, more general equation. Uh, K is equal to A into E to the power of minus E A over R T. Yeah. And this was found to be experimentally true. So, we know this equation is more or less true. Do these two equations now compare? That is the question. So, uh, a few important points to note. First, uh, we are basically relating this A with this quantity. Uh, so, the first thing to note is that A has this temperature dependence here. So, A is proportional to root T. Uh, so, uh, that is no point number 1. Second, which is the more important point? The collision theory so far is missing a critical factor, this exponential. Uh, this exponential is the critical part that is what lo Arrhenius looked at that part and postulated that a transition state must exist. This transient species between the reactant and product must exist because of this exponential form and that is simply missing here. Okay. Uh, so, uh, in the next module we will look how to include that and the assumption we have made several assumptions so far. And the assumption that really goes wrong is that so we have assumed that all collisions are reactive so far. And that of course cannot be true. Uh, just think from the perspective of how Arrhenius was uh, thinking. Arrhenius basically was thinking of uh, a transition state that looks like this. And so Arrhenius said that you need a minimum activation energy for reaction to happen. But what have we said in this collision theory? Every collision is reactive at any energy. So, these two molecules might be approaching very very slowly, they are coming out very very slowly like this, they will still react. So, there is no sense of any activation energy here. Uh, what we have to build into this theory is that molecules that are moving slower should not react molecules should react only if they have sufficient energy. Uh, so, that is the thing we are going to build in next module. So, uh, in this module in summary, uh, we have discussed the distinction between rate constant and the rate. Uh, we have looked at a special case when a bimolecular reaction is happening of a reactant with itself. And finally, we have uh, compared and analyzed with Arrhenius equation. And two important points emerge. One, the pre exponential factor in Arrhenius equation depends on temperature as square root of t. And the second is that currently the exponential itself is missing. So, we have to work somehow to include that, which we will do in module number 10. Thank you very much.